Hi, I'm Dr. Nathan Kelber with JSTOR Labs. We're here to do Python Basics 1. If you've never done Python before, this is a great place to get started. Why would you want to learn Python? Well, Python is the fastest growing language in computer programming. Learning Python is a great choice right now because it's widely adopted in the digital humanities and data science worlds. It's regarded as an easy to learn language. It's flexible, having wide support for working with numerical and textual data. And it's also a skill that's desired by employers in academic, nonprofit, and private sectors. If you can master Python, starting with the skills in Python basics, you'll be able to do not only text analysis, but also web scraping, analyzing social media data, image analysis, and task automation. Let's get started with expressions and operators. The simplest form of Python programming is an expression using an operator. An expression is a simple mathematical statement like one plus one. The operator in this case is a plus or an addition. Let's try this in your Jupyter Notebook. Type in an expression in the code block and then run it. In my case, I'll just put seven plus eight. And now I've got a few options to run. I can go up here and click the run button for this code cell. Or if I'm on a Mac, I can put shift and return on Windows, control and enter. When I run that cell, I immediately get back my result, 15. Python can handle a large variety of expressions. We can also do subtraction. I'm gonna try 15 minus five. I run that code and I get back 10. We can also do multiplication and division. Now, you may have used a kind of X symbol to represent multiplication in grade school. Python uses an asterisk. So let's try that in the next cell here. I'm going to do 4 times 8. And we're going to run that. And I get 32. We can also do division. So let's try 32 divided by 8 and we'll get four. There are a large number of operators that we can use in Python. Here's a table showing some of them. We can do exponents using two asterisks. So for the example here is three raised to the third power is 27. We can do modulus or remainder, and that will give us the remainder after doing a division operation. And then division, multiplication, subtraction, and addition like we've already seen. We can also use parentheses to change the order of operations. So I can do an addition first, and then afterwards, a multiplication. So five plus four is nine, nine times five is 45. Python has three basic data types, integers, floats, and strings. Integers and floats refer to numbers and strings refer to text. An integer is a whole number. So we might think of something like negative three, zero, two, 534. Those are all integers. A float is really any number that has a decimal point in it, that has a fractional value. So 6.3, negative 19.23, 5.0, 0.01, those are all floats. Now. A number can be equal even if it's an integer and a float. So 5.0 is equal to 5, but technically 1 is a float and 1 is an integer. Now the name for text, uh, uh, the text data type in Python is a string. And so strings are just characters that go between a set of quotation marks. And that can include uh, numerical characters. So keep in mind that if a data type is being treated as a string, it may not be treated as an integer or a float. Let me explain what I mean by that. So we've got a few examples here. What we're going to do is we're going to compare two different values. And so to do that in Python, we use two equal signs in a row. So here I've got an integer on the left, 42, and I've got a float on the right, 42.0. And I've got this, these two equal signs in the middle, and that's going to tell us whether they're equal to each other. And if they're equal to each other, we're going to get a true back. If they're not equal, we're going to get a false. So when I run this code cell, Python is going to give me true. So Python's able to figure out 
that the integer 42 is equal to the float 42.0. In this case, I've got an integer 15, and I'm going to check to see whether it's equal to 15, uh, the, the text string, right? And so in this case, I get false. So it can't figure out the difference between those two. Now, what if we try 15, the integer, and compare it with the string? So I've got the integer here and the string here. I'm going to run that. I also get false. So it's worth keeping this in mind that uh, Python treats strings differently than it does integers and floats. Uh, what I can do with strings, just like I can add together two different floats or I can add together two different integers, I can add strings together. And that is a process called concatenation. Concatenation basically takes the two sets of characters and it joins them together in the middle, right? So in this case, I've got the, the string hello and I've got the string world and I put a plus operator in the middle between the two of them. And when I run this line of code, it's going to concatenate and bring them together. And notice that when I bring them together, there's no space in the middle. It joins them exactly end to end, right? And so if I wanted for there to be a space between the two of them, I would either have to add a space to the end of hello or to the beginning of world. And I can also combine multiple strings at the same time. So for example here, I've got hello uh, world, and then I've also got an exclamation point inside of this last string. I can run that and it will put together all three strings at once. Now, it's important to remember that the way that Python treats the plus operator, the addition operator, is different uh, for strings uh, than it is for uh, integers or floats. So integers or floats, it's going to do the mathematical operation of adding them together. For strings, it's going to do that concatenation. And so uh, what happens when we try to add an integer uh, to a string or a float to a string is that Python gets confused because it doesn't know exactly what we want. So if I do something like this, where I've got 55, but technically this is a string here because it's in quotes, and I'm going to add it to this integer 23. If I try and run that, I'm going to get an error. And so you have to think about this from Python's perspective because it's trying to figure out, do I add these in a kind of mathematical way or do I concatenate these in a kind of textual way? And so really Python is trying to figure out when you say you want to add the string 55 to the integer 23, does that mean you want the string 5523 to come out? Or does that mean you want uh, the addition, the, uh, the, the addition in mathematics of 78 to come out? And that's the thing that's confusing Python. I should say that we can multiply strings, which is, is basically taking the string and concatenating it several times. So in this example here, we've got hello world, and then we're going to multiply it by five, and we just get the string reproduced over and over again. So we've discussed integers, floats, and strings. Now we need a way to store them, and we store them in something called a variable. A variable is like a container that stores information. You can store integers, floats, strings, and also other kinds of information as well. To create a variable, we initialize it with an assignment statement. The assignment statement gives the variable its first value. So in this example here, we have a variable that we're going to create. We're going to call it new integer variable, and we're going to set its value equal to 5 with this initialization statement, this first line of code right here. And so then we're going to take that variable, and then we're going to add 22 and see what the output is. Now in this case, we added 22 to our new integer variable, but we did not change the value of that new integer variable. If we wanted to change the value, we would have to create a new initialization statement that changes that value. So here's an example of that. Here I've created a variable called my favorite number. And my favorite number is seven. Uh, and then this down here is just gonna return my favorite number. The second line here is commented out, so this code is not actually gonna run. So if I run this exactly as it is in the code cell here, I'm going to get back 7. Now, if I take out this first hashtag and turn this comment into a legitimate code that's going to run, it's going to initialize uh, originally with my favorite number equals 7, but then my favorite number is going to be changed to 9. And so when I uh, ask it to output my favorite number, I'm going to get 9 instead of 7. 
So you can see that we can kind of put things into the container and we can change the things in, in the container and then get something else out, right? Uh, here's another example. So we start with cats in the house or cats in house and that value is equal to one. Of course, we all know that cats often multiply in the house. So uh, in the second uh, line of code here, we're, we're gonna set cats in house equal to the original cats in house plus two more. So the idea here, don't think about this like an algebraic way, like the thing on the left is equal to the thing on the right. That's, that's not what's happening here. What's happening here in this assignment statement is we're saying, take this uh, variable and create a new assignment for it that is the old value plus two more. So the original value is one, and then we set a new value that's the original value plus two more, and then here we're just returning that value again. So we should get three for cats in-house. Uh, of course, we can do this not just with integers and floats, but with strings. And so uh, here I'm gonna store a string variable. Uh, it's called new string variable, and it's just gonna be hello with a space. And then we're gonna take a new string variable and we're gonna add, or in this case, what's called concatenating, because remember, we're bringing two strings together. Uh, we're gonna concatenate with the word world and it's gonna make one long string, right? We can create a variable with almost any name, but there are a few guidelines that are recommended. The most important guideline is that variable names should be descriptive. If we create a variable that stores the day of the month, then we should give it a descriptive name that tells what's in that container, like day of month. From a logical perspective, we could call the variable almost anything, and as long as our code was consistent, it would still run and give us the result we want. But if somebody's trying to read our code, uh, it could be very confusing if it's not clear what that variable is. So let me give you an example of that. So here we have uh, a short program that's gonna compute the number of seconds in three days. So it's going, to take a, it's going to create a variable called days, and it's going to set that to three, hours in a day to 24, minutes in an hour to 60, seconds in a minute to 60, and then it's just going to multiply all of those variables together. So when I run that, I get my output, and that's how many seconds are in three days, right? And so that makes sense when we look at the code, we can kind of get a sense that that is what is happening. We could write the same uh, program that gives the same output but with confusing variable names. So here I've written a different version of the same program. Instead of saying days, hours in a day, and so on, now I've given it wacky uh, variable names, right? So here we have hot dogs equals 60, Sasquatch equals 24, example equals three, uh, answer equals 60. And notice also uh, we had a nice uh, comment up top here that describes what the code is doing. Here there's no commenting. So whoever reads this code is gonna be thoroughly confused, right? And we multiply those variables together, the output is still gonna be the same, right? But for human readers, this is gonna be super confusing and it's gonna make your code very hard to troubleshoot later on. So give your variable a descriptive name, make it clear what's in that container. Uh, that way you'll help out people who read your code later and there's a good chance that person will be you. Uh, a matter of weeks or months later, you'll be looking back at this and saying, what was I doing here? And so having that descriptive name is super important. Uh, in addition to being uh, descriptive, variable names must follow three basic rules. And these are hard rules. Uh, that is, if you don't follow these rules, your code will break. So uh, your variable has to be one word. There's no spaces allowed in variable names in Python. Uh, it should only use letters, numbers, and the underscore character. And finally, your variable uh, cannot begin with a number. So there's a short little exercise there in the notebook. I recommend giving that a try to figure out which variables are valid and which are not. Python also has style guidelines for variable names. And these are softer rules. That is, you can break these style guidelines and your code will still technically run, but they're good practice. And so these are defined uh, in the PEP8 standard. And uh, in the case of Python, we use something called snake case. Snake case uses underscores uh, between each word in the variable name, and it uses all lowercase letters. So let me give you an example here. Uh, this is what a uh, snake case looks like. Uh, if you have used a different language, you may be familiar with something like kebab case, uh, and kebab case basically has uh, dashes or hyphens in between, so it looks like a shish kebab. 
Uh, and you may be familiar with uh, something like uh, camel case, which uses a capital letter uh, in between, uh, a capital letter at the beginning of each word in the variable name. Uh, Python is a snake case language, so try to stick to snake case variables when you're writing Python code. For our final topic, let's talk about functions. Uh, many different kinds of programs need to do similar operations, and oftentimes we would end up writing the same code over and over again. A function is like a code that has already been written, and essentially we can pass something into a function and get the result back out. And so there's three kinds of functions that are common in Python. There's native functions that are built into Python. Uh, one example that we've seen already is the print function. Uh, there's functions that others have written that you can import from other libraries, and there's functions you write yourself. Uh, we're going to talk about functions you write yourself in Python Basics 2. For now, let's look at a few of the native functions in Python, and we can go back to uh, the print function and start there. So we started with the print function before, and we passed in this string, uh, hello world, and it just printed out hello world, right? We could also define a variable. So now we have variable powers. We can put that string into a variable and then pass the variable into the function. So in this example here, we have our string, and that's a variable we're creating. And we're going to use this initialization statement with an equals to uh, set the value of our string to this uh, hello world. And then we're going to pass our string. So in this case here, we pass the string itself that says hello world. In this case, we're going to pass the variable name, our string, into the print function, and it's going to print it out for us. And so you can see how this is a powerful way to, to basically automatically do tasks for us, right? And so there's also an input function. So we have a print function to get things out. We also have an input function so users can put information in. So with the input function, basically, we can create a variable name and then have the user input something into that container, right? So let's look at this short little program here. First, we're going to print, hi, what is your name? And so that's going to print out. The user is going to see that. Then we're going to create a variable called user name. And we're going to take in the input function, and they're going to put uh, something in that container, in that user name variable, right? And then finally, we're going to print out, pleased to meet you. And then we're going to uh, concatenate that pleased to meet you string with whatever string is in the username. So there's a plus here, and then we have the username variable. That is basically going to just concatenate the string onto the end. So let's, let's run this and get a sense of what it's doing, right? So hi, what is your name? So my name is Nathan. And then uh, it takes in Nathan, and it says, pleased to meet you, Nathan. And so it responds uh, with exactly the input that I put in there. Now that input function is always going to interpret what you put in as a string. And that can cause problems that we'll see in a moment. So think about that because you may need to change, you may want a string or you may not want a string depending on the circumstances. There's a second way to do this that I want to make sure that I mention here. So in the example before, we did pleased to meet you and then this plus and then the username. And so we're using concatenation to bring those two strings together, right? Uh, we can also use something called an F string. And so here we have a print function and then we have the letter F before our string begins. The string is encapsulated in those single quotes, right? And so in this example, if we put that F uh, in front of our uh, quote, then we can put username in brackets and it will automatically insert it in. So this is a little bit neater way to, to insert a string into the middle of a print function. So here we have the plus and the username. Here we're just putting the username in brackets and sometimes that's a little bit easier to do. But the result is the same. Uh, I'm going to get my username inserted into that larger string. Now we can concatenate many strings together, but we can't concatenate strings with integers or floats. And so this is where that distinction between the numbers on one side and the text on the other side is really important, right? So we've got a whole bunch of strings here and they're all being connected together or concatenated. Uh, that's fine. That's, that's easy to do, connect all the strings. But if we have something like this, and so here we're using the print function, and we have there are in single quotes, and that's a string, and then we have uh, concatenation, and then we have seven. Now seven is actually an integer, right? 
And so if we try to concatenate this string with this integer and then with another uh, string uh, to get there our seven continents as a single string, we're going to run into problems here because we've got an integer in the middle. So if I try and run that code, I'm going to get can only concatenate str string, not int or integer to string, right? So the way to do this is we have to use a function called str uh, or str, and we have to, and what that does is it will take the integer and it will convert it into a string. And so in this case, we have print, and then we've got our first string, and then the plus for concatenation, and then str. Uh, so the str function is going to convert that seven into a string. And so now we have three strings in this case. So this, S, uh, this str7 is going to evaluate first and turn it into a string. And if we run that, then we're going to get the result that we want. And you have to be very sensitive about this because sometimes your code will do wacky things. And so you've you got to pay attention to make sure that uh, when you're working with strings, that they're all strings when you're trying to concatenate them together. So I'll give you an example of how this can, this can create problems. So we've got an example program here, uh, and let's, let's just run through what this program is going to do. It's going to print how old are you. It's going to take uh, the input that the user puts in, and it's going to store it in a variable called user age. Uh, then it's going to take the number of months. Uh, uh, it's going to create a variable called number of months, and it's going to take that user age and set it, uh, multiply it by 12, and, and that's going to be a new variable. It's going to be number of months variable, right? And then it's going to print out finally that is more than plus number of months plus months old. So the result hopefully coming out is going to be uh, how many months uh, old this person is, or at least their age times 12, right? And so let's run this code and let's see what actually happens. So it says, how old are you? Uh, I'm older than this, but I'm going to put in 22 because I feel young today. Uh, and so I put in 22, and what do I get out? It says that is more than some very big number, a lot of twos old, uh, months old. And so I'm confused. I'm like, this is not what I want my code to do. It's just supposed to multiply by 12. And so what do you think happened here? Uh, and so if we look closely at this, uh, and we can even run it another time if, if we want and, and try and see if what it's doing. I'm going to put, let's say I'm 46. I'm feeling a little older today. Um, and so I see that. Uh, interesting. I've got four, six, four, six, four, six, four. It's repeating over and over again. And if I were to count how many times it repeats, that it would repeat 12 times, basically. So we've got a sense that there's an error here. And so what's happening is the input uh, that we're putting into this user age variable is taken in as a string. And remember, a long time ago, I said that uh, you can multiply strings. And when you multiply a string, it just kind of uh, uh, makes that string, it, it makes it happen uh, several times, right? So uh, what's happening in this case is that instead of uh, treating this user age as a, uh, an integer, it's treating it as a string. And so we can change our math here. Let's make this uh, int. And so uh, that will originally take in the user age as a string, but here it'll, it will be treated as an integer, and then it's going to be multiplied by 12, right? And so let's see if that fixes our problem. How old are you? Uh, I'm feeling like I'm 38 now. Oh, it didn't fix our problem. Okay, what's the issue now? Can only cat concatenate string, not int to string. Oh, so it's the same problem we had before. So now I've got a number of months that's set to an integer. And uh, what's happening is when I run this print function, I've got a string here, and then an integer here, and then a string again. So it's having a problem because it's trying to concatenate a string with an integer with another string. And so we need another kind of function around here. And so we're going to make this, um, we want to turn this into a a string, so we're going to use uh, the stir function, and then we're going to put that uh, around there, and so we're passing number of months into the stir function to make it a string. Let's run our code another time, uh, and we're going to say 24. So I am 24, and we get the right result, 288 months old, 
And so we have successfully troubleshooted our code. And now we understand also a little bit about the differences between strings and integers and how to uh, convert from one to another. Great job, you've completed Python Basics 1. Now if you've just watched this video, I recommend you take some time to play with the code, go into the code cells, change things around, break things. The way to learn programming is you have to do the typing, you have to mess around with variables, get errors, uh, and discover new ways that code works. You can't just watch these videos, you have to get your hands dirty to really get good at Python. So please take the time, we've done a lot of material here. We've done expressions, operators, integers, floats, strings, variables, and functions. That's a ton of material. Take some time, review that stuff before forging on to Python Basics 2.